scholars, it's good to be back with you, and I'd like to tell you this time about mass moments of inertia and how they relate to dynamics problems. What I want to do first is tell you about mass moment of inertia in kind of physical terms, and then I'll go over it in mathematical terms, and you can, you can uh, make the connection between the two. All right, I need to start with some mass, and so what I'm going to do here, I pull a book off my shelf. This is a big, heavy book. This is the standard handbook for mechanical engineers. It was pretty old. This one belonged to my father when he went to engineering school in the late 50s, I think. I don't know if they still make these or not, but I hope so. They're great books. Okay, it weighs, it weighs a lot. It's heavy. It's got mass. If I wanted to accelerate it along a line, translationally, I would apply a force and push, okay? And I'd say it's sliding across something. So I would push. Well, if I'm trying to accelerate this book, I have to apply a force, F equals MA. And so you might think of mass as what resists that force, okay? It's the resistance to translational acceleration. Okay, well, if I can translate or accelerate along the line, I should be able to accelerate rotationally, too. Now, this book also has some mass moment of inertia, resistance to rotation, rotational acceleration. So, um, the sum of the moments equals I alpha. Therefore, the mass moment of inertia must be a body's resistance to being accelerated about an axis, rotational acceleration. And I get different answers depending on how I decide to rotate a body. Let's say I go this way and I'm trying to rotate about the center of the book. I'm going to get one answer. Okay? If I try to rotate, let's see if I can do this here, rotate it about the end of the book, I is going to get larger. There's more mass out there. It's farther away from the center of rotation. I actually goes up. So if I want to generate the same rotational acceleration, I'm going to have to use a larger moment. Well, let's go to the extreme. What if I, have, I hold it out here, and now the, the, the uh, distance from the center of rotation is something like a meter. I'm, um, I'm quite two meters tall, so my arms are maybe a little less than a meter, 900 millimeters maybe. And I just want to start rotating about th this way, with the mass far away from the center of rotation. I'm going to need even more moment to generate the same rotational acceleration. That's mass moment of inertia. Now, let's talk about it mathematically. Now, mathematically, it's pretty straightforward to explain. The expression for mass moment of inertia, you can write this way, okay? And I'll tell you here in a second what all this means, but let me get the expression down here on the board first. Okay? Now, if you've seen some of these other videos or you've studied uh, strength of material somewhere, you're going to think this looks awfully familiar. This is exactly the expression, expression for area moment of inertia when we're dealing with bending of beams, the thing that tells you about the stiffness of a beam that's a function of its geometry. Now, mass moment of inertia and area moment of inertia have this, the exact same mathematical expression. And to a mathematician, they're really the same they're really the same thing. As engineers or engineering technologists, it means something different to us physically. To a mathematician, they're identical. All right? When mathematicians see the same expression enough times in their calcul calculations, they eventually give that expression a name, and they decided to give this type of expression the name moment of inertia. Okay, well what does this mean? That's the moment of inertia of a body, and that, that term right there, md squared, uh, accounts for its distance from the center of rotation. Okay? Well, if I have a complex shape or a composite shape, a uh, shape made up of a lot of smaller shapes. Now, I can't think of why I would want to spin my electric guitar, but let's say I did. Maybe I want to spin it this way. Well, the body would have a mass moment of inertia, and the bridge would, and the pickups would, and the neck would, and I could divide all those up, figure out the mass moments of inertia of the individual parts, which would be there and there and all these other terms, and then take their individual masses and multiply them from the, by the distance from the center of rotation, square that number, just add it all up. Okay? Then you can get the mass moment of inertia of a composite body. Okay, well this is all well and good. How is this going to work? Let's take the simplest body I can think of, and let's take just a, a rod, a uniform rod made out of whatever. It doesn't even matter what it's made out of, as long as we know the length, and as long as we know the mass, okay? So the length for right now, I'll call that L. This is, you know, L can be any number. If you want a, uh, uh, a 
a mental model to work with. Say this is, well here, hang on, I've got something that will work right up here. I've got a steel bar right here, okay? This is a thin steel bar that I, I made for other reasons. You know, it doesn't matter where it came from, there's a steel bar, okay? It's uniform, it's thin, okay? So this is good, we'll use that. And so there's L is the distance, the length of the bar here, okay? Mass is whatever this thing weighs, okay? And let's say that the center of gravity, since it's uniform, the center of gravity is right in the middle, that's the balance point. So it's L over 2 to there and L over 2 to there. And let's say I'm spinning it about its center of gravity, okay? Now, if I want to know how to calculate this, I can do a couple of things. Well, I'm going to do what most of us would do and go look this up. All right, if you look this up, you'll find out that I about the center of gravity equals ML squared over 12. And that's fine, but where did this come from? Come on, you've got to have wondered at least once or twice. Okay, let me tell you where this comes from. Okay, what if I did it this way? What if I divided this bar up into lots and lots of little segments and started adding up the effect of all those little segments? That starts sounding an awful lot like calculus, doesn't it? What I would do is, if I, you know, the, there was n segments here, and, okay, that's the mass, mass of the nth segment. And I'm going to assume those segments are small, so small that their, their own mass moment of inertia is basically zero. So now I'm going to add, figure out the mass moment of inertia of that half of the bar, and I'm going to double it to get this. So I, and I'll call this uh, ICCG, I don't know if I can get my pencil, there we go. ICG is 2 times the sum of mx squared, where n equals 1 to big N. Okay, all right. So what that means is I'm going to add up the masses of all these individual little segments times their distance squared from the center of rotation, that's x. I guess you should probably put a subscript there too. Add those all up and double it because there's two halves of the bar. Okay, well that's nice, but that isn't going to give me a very clean answer. This is really calculus. Come on, this is really integration. I want those masses to be smaller and smaller and smaller when they get infinitesimally small and I'm still adding them up. That's integration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this out a little bit differently and I'm going to integrate from now from minus L over 2 to L over 2. I don't have to play that game of, of, add, of adding up one half and then just doubling it. I can just integrate right from there to there. Rho x squared dx. And the only thing you haven't seen before is rho. Rho takes the place of that individual mass. Rho is the mass per unit length. Okay, so that's going to be m over l. Right, so far so good. Well, let's do this then. This is if I work this out, I'm going to get rho. Let's see, x cubed over three minus l over two to l over two. All right. Well, to work that out, I'm going to get m. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm giving it away. I'm going to get rho l cubed over twelve. All right. That's not what's in the book. The book says it's ml squared over 12. That's what that is. But rho l equals m, or rho l equals m. If I just multiply through it by l, that's uh, the mass of the bar. So take one rho l out of that, and I get ml squared over 12. That and that are the same answer. So that's where it comes from. Now, what happens if I want to calculate the mass moment of inertia about one end of the bar? Let's say I'll call that end A and that end B, all right? Mass moment of inertia about one end of the bar. Well, I'm going to get a different answer because now some of this, this mass is much farther from the center of rotation, and so that MD squared term really adds up. Well, let me, this is getting kind of sloppy. Let me clean this off, and I'll spend about two minutes showing you how this works. Well, if I wanted the mass about A, which is the one end of the bar we had right there, I'm going to use the exact same expression, only now I'm going to change my integration limits because I'm not going from one end to the other assuming that the center is of rotation is at the center of the bar, the axis of rotation, I'm assuming it's at one end. All right? So if I do this, 
I'm going to get rho x cubed over 3 from 0 to L. Well, that's easy. That's rho L cubed over 3. Hmm. All right. Or, using the same logic we had before, whoops, I have ML cubed or ML squared over 3. All right. That sure is a lot bigger. It was ML squared over 12 before, so this is a lot bigger. This is like four times bigger. Well, could I figure this out one other way? You bet. I can figure this out by using our parallel axis theorem, this, this expression I had written up there before. If I only know ICG, which I, maybe I looked it up in a table somewhere, and I know that, uh, remember I've got this MD squared term in there, okay? Well, I know M is the mass of the bar, and D, well, let's see, that's going to be the distance from the center of rotation to the center of gravity of the bar, so that's going to be, let's, let's write this all out. This is ML squared over 12 plus M L over 2 squared. All right? Trust me that when you work this all out, you get ML squared over 3. Oops, not 13, 3. Okay? There and there. So there you go. There's an introduction to mass moments of inertia. I hope this helps, and I'll see you again soon.